Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Bluff Monkey, and in the next couple of videos, we're going to take a look at Ableton Echo. Now, Ableton Echo was introduced in Ableton Live 10, and it only appears in the Suite version, but it's one of the, the main reasons I would suggest upgrading to Suite, because it's a really, really excellent delay plugin. So you'll find it in your audio effects. Let's just grab it here, pull it down onto this channel, have a quick look at the user interface. So on first glance, it looks fairly complicated, but it's not really. Um, it's 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 almost like a turbocharged version of ping pong delay. So if you're familiar with this, let's just bring this down here. This ping pong delay. Uh, you've got delayed delay settings, uh, delay offset, feedback, dry wet knobs, and a filter. So all fairly simple. And you've got some similar controls on the left here. So let's start over on this left part where you select your delay times. So you've got a left and a right channel. Um, by default, these are stereo linked. So what you do with the left channel happens on the right channel. And you can see what's happening to the delay settings in the main window here in the center. So your dry signal comes in at the top. So this is the signal path. It comes in this way and your delay, let's just unlink these. Your delay settings are represented by these little yellow lines. So you can see the left and the right channels being affected independently here. So as I said, you can link these and I'll do the same thing or have them unlinked. You can do the same thing. You can control the delay times by actually dragging, clicking and dragging over in the window here. So you can do the same kind of thing. Um, so these delay times can be synced. So this is going to be beat synced. So you'd have your 16th note, eighth notes, quarter notes, half notes, that kind of thing. Or you can just have a simple time delay. So it goes from what we've got one millisecond up to two and a half seconds. So that's a long time. But I generally, for the most part, keep them synced. So I'm going to leave them like that for now. And then you've got your dot, your notes, triplets, dotted notes, and sixteenths. So if you click sixteenths, your delay time, like ping pong delay, actually. Let's bring this back up. These are variants of sixteenth notes. So you've got two sixteenths, three sixteenths, three sixteenths, spit it out, four, five, six, eight, and so on and so forth. You can do the same thing with echo so this this side on the left would be nine sixteenths and over here we got three sixteenths or five four or five for example um but my go-to i don't know why i've always done something like this i've always done like a dotted quarter note and then an eighth note it's just habit i suppose and then you've got your delay offset so this gives you a percentage offset of the time you've got selected here and that can be a plus or a minus value and you can see as i'm doing that the display shows you what I'm doing. Okay, so let's just set it back to that. You've got an input gain. Now this is gonna uh, allow you to define the, the gain of the dry signal coming in. And you've got feedback. Now, if you look at the main display again, these delay lines represented by these yellow lines, the delay hits, sorry, represented by these yellow lines, you can see them getting denser and denser as the feedback goes up. And this is gonna end up being a, a, a very dense cloud of delay tails here. All right, so that's going to just go on forever. So it's quite pretty. And then another couple of buttons you've got on the left hand side here are the clip dry button. So when you have this activated, you can actually use the input gain to overdrive the input signal. Uh, one thing I would say is I wish they had a, a kind of um, attach button at the bottom here so that as you increase the input gain, you can decrease the output over on this side because it does get very loud, but they don't. So just be careful of that. You need to do that manually. And then you can invert the feedback signal. So it's almost like a phase invert, which allows you to mess around with the stereo signal a little bit. So you can do that as well. Although it, it's, it's fairly subtle, so it's not something I would probably use that much. Um, let me just switch this off. I've got a tiny little plucky sound that I've created in Anna 2. I, I tend to use these short little plucky sounds to show off delays because the delays tend to um, react quite nicely to them and just a little melodic sequence that I've created. So let's have a listen to this dry. Let's switch this bass channel off. So this is all it's doing. So it's fairly simple. So let's switch echo back on. Um, I'm just going to make sure everything else is switched off. We'll come back to this in a second. Yes, it is. So we're just going to be listening to the delay. 
you the dry wet signal, uh, dry wet knobs over on the right here. So those are too fast for me for now. So let's go to my standard choice. We're actually going to move right over to the right hand side. Um, we'll come back to the center section in the middle because that's the most complicated section. Um, and the, the more standard delay controls are over on the right here. So, so you've got your stereo width. So that's full, full wide and then mono. He's got stereo mode. Let's just turn the feedback down a bit. Stereo mode, ping pong delay. And then you've also got, interesting, you've got a mid side uh, option as well. So what you can do is you can control the mid delay time and the side delay time. Now what I found is, if we have a listen to this, all you're hearing at the moment is the quarter note. All right, so it's, it's actually, uh, the delay time is gonna be the same as the notes I've got here, all right? So if we change this up a bit, you can hear that affecting the center section. What you need to do, I found, is actually give it some stereo signal for the sides to react as well. So you can hear those sides being affected now and the center separately. So it's not going to work if you've just got one oscillator and a kind of monophonic signal coming in. Uh, I haven't really found a use for it yet. It tends to muddy up the mix a little bit too much, although I haven't explored it fully, so your mileage may vary. Right, so where were we? Roughly around here. Now, what you've also got, they've built a reverb into the signal chain. And it's not the worst reverb I've ever heard. It's certainly better than something like Silent, which is still atrocious. So the controls you've got are reverb amount, which is fairly self-explanatory, but you can route the reverb into the pre-delay um, signal. So this is gonna reverberate the dry signal. And then the delay hits are gonna be acting on the reverb. It can be post-delay. So the reverb's after the delay. So the difference between those two tends to be fairly subtle. Okay, they sound fairly similar. Uh, post tends to be a little bit denser, but you know, you're probably not gonna hear that in a mix. What will make a difference is that you can insert the reverb into the feedback loop. Now this, this can get quite interesting. So that, that starts to self-sustain. So you've got the reverb amount, you've got the uh, routing option, uh, you've also got a decay time, all right? So that's a very short decay. In fact, let's have a listen to that. Let's put it in post a second. So it's like a tiny little room, and then this is gonna be full on cathedral mode. You can already hear it. And if you've got a high decay time in feedback mode, I mean, it's gonna be mayhem, isn't it? you're going to get some serious feedback uh, loops and feedback noise doing that. I would tend to keep it post, just, you know, probably habit. But it's actually quite nice. It's quite a nice reverb. It's not... It's quite moody. So, right, so you've got your stereo... This is output. You've got your stereo width, which we've already looked at. You've got your output section. This is your output gain. So use this in conjunction with your input gain. And then you've got your standard dry wet. So these are all fairly standard, apart from the reverb, they're all fairly standard delay controls. Now what I wanna to touch on quickly, let's just make sure there's no reverb going on at all. We'll have a look at this input drive. So listen to this signal as it is. Oh, let's put it back in ping pong so we can actually hear what's going on. Now, as I increase the input gain, really happening 
is, I mean, it sounds like there might be a little bit of saturation going on. Yeah, there is. But you can actually clip it with this um, little D button here as well. And this is going to be a far more significant effect. So it becomes you know reasonably distorted then and it sounds nice it's like all these ableton saturation distortion pluggers actually sound pretty good um i like doing this with some reverb i found that that works quite well so let's have a listen to this so yeah that's nice i like that now we've got these controls out the way these are all fairly standard controls. So let's put everything back to roughly normal. And let's have a look at the middle. So we've already had a look at this uh, delay representation, this delay time representation, this nice little graphic that we've got here. Woo! And underneath it, kind of hidden, you've actually got a filter. So if you click this tiny little triangle, it brings up your filter section. So this again is, if we bring down the ping pong delay, it's exactly the same as this kind of thing. Uh, but you've actually got two nodes that you can control. So you've got, let's switch it on, the little blue box switches it on. So you've got your high pass and low pass. So let's have a listen to the filter. Just make this a bit wetter. Ooh. So you can control it with the nodes. You've basically got your, your filter frequency and your resonance by woo, dragging this around. But you can do it with these numbers as well. I don't know why you would, unless you wanted to put a specific number in, I suppose. But I tend to do these things by ear, like you should. So you can do it that way, or with the numbers. And again, as with most Ableton filters, they do sound pretty nice. All right, let's bring some dry back in. So you've got that. Uh, but this is a multi-function window. Uh, for the purposes of showing you what everything does, I'm going to switch the filter off to keep the signal path as clean as possible. So now we've got a modulation section. So at the top here, this bit here is your LFO. It's effectively your LFO. And it's stereo, so it's represented by yellow and blue lines. I'm not sure which one's which. It doesn't say in the manual, I don't think. So you can set your LFO time with this little control section here. And again, it can be synced, beat synced, or just free running. So it goes from 0 0.01 hertz, so that's going to take forever, and it goes up to 40 hertz. But like some other Ableton plugins, you've got an, uh, an, a times four button here. So if you times this by four, this is going to be 160 hertz. So that gets you far closer into the audio rate range of modulation. Uh, so let's switch it back down again for a second. And then you've got a phase button underneath. So you can modulate left and right channels. So that's completely out of phase, 180 degrees. Your left and right channels are completely out of phase or have them in phase. Uh, this I find is useful most for, if, if you're using modulation and you don't think the delays are sitting in a mix properly, you can play around with this phase. And it's, it's quite subtle, but it will help your stereo image of a particular sound sit in a mix a bit better assuming you've got enough going on for you to need to do that kind of thing. So it is useful. It's useful to have that control. I wish more plugins had that control actually, but they don't. And you can choose between your various LFA shapes. So you've got sine wave, triangle, ramp up, ramp down, pulse. I don't, you, you can't do pulse width, although why would you really need to? Yeah, pulse. And then you've got like a, a step and hold kind of thing. So as you increase this, you can see it's more, more and more random steps. So let's just leave it on sine wave for now because that's the most obvious way of hearing what's going on. So your modulation sources are your delay times, which can be set here, and your filter, your filter cutoff. So let's just increase the dry wet a little bit so we can hear what's going on. So I've got a fairly slow LFO, and let's have a listen to what happens when you modulate your delay time. Oh, and this, these little buttons in the middle are, these numbers are kind of click and drag. 
So what's happening is these delay times that you've got set on the left here are being modulated by this LFO. So you can hear these delay times going up and down and it gives you that wobbling analog feel. I'm doing it way too much here just so you can hear what's going on. In reality, you'd probably have it set down here somewhere, you know, maybe up to 10%. Unless, I suppose what you can do is if you go into, let's multiply that by four, by four and go into audio rate, you can probably, let's have a try. Yeah. So you get that FME ring modi kind of sound there, in which case your, your modulation amount would be much higher. I'm sure somebody will find a use for that, but probably not me for now. But it's there, it's, you know, it's useful to have because you never know. And then your other modulation source is your filter cutoff. So oh, let's turn the filter back on for that to do anything. So let's have the delay time right down. So you can hear the filter being modulated now. That kind of thing. That's more obvious. Might be nice. Yeah. You find the right spot. You might want, you know, if you're using step and hold, you might want that temp uh, beat synced. Let's try. Yeah, that might work. So yeah, you can modulate your delay and your filter. You've also got an envelope follower uh, at zero percent. The envelope follower is not doing anything. This is an envelope that will react to the incoming signal. Um, and as you increase the mix, the modulation is affected more and more by the envelope follower or the incoming signal. Now, one thing I'm slightly confused about with this is you have no way that I can tell of controlling the envelope and the effect I can't see as being that uh, noticeable. I mean, you can hear the filter being moved, but I don't know what's moving and by how much. So I've tended to leave this for now. Uh, your, again, your mileage may vary, but the control's there if you want to use it. I prefer to use the LFO, the good old fashioned LFO, because then I can hear it and I know what's going on and I understand it and I don't get confused. So, so yeah, I do it that way. And then finally, the last section here is your character section. Now this gives you a few controls. Let's make sure we've got no modulation going on and I'm gonna leave the filter off again for now. So let's just hear our basic delay signal again. Now, there's a few controls here. Um, first of all, you've got gate. Now what this does, this uh, allows the delay signal to only occur once a certain volume or threshold has been reached. So if we look at this, uh, if we look at the, um, the meter here, we're hitting about minus 18 dB. So at the moment you can't hear, because the gate's switched on, you can't really hear any delay signal. But as I reduce this threshold, you'll hear the delay signal start coming in. So this is useful if, you, if you've got some subtle notes in a particular channel. Uh, and the filter's closed and they're a little bit woolly, you might not want those signals to trigger the delay. But if you've got something that responds to the velocity and you hit like this one, hang on, let me see. So this this uh, this sound does actually respond to velocity. So as I hit the note harder, you can hear it opening up more. Um, you might want to use this in that situation where only louder notes will trigger the delay. So let's pull the threshold down and you'll hear the delay start to kick in. So you'll see that the the number where the delay started occurring was roughly where the meter was showing. So minus 15 dB. About now, there you go, it started to come in. And then you've got your release time, which is basically how quickly the delay fades in. So you've got that. You've also got ducking. Um, and what ducking does is it's self-explanatory. As the dry signal is sounding, 
the delay signal will be muted. So it's like a, a side chaining kind of deal. And again, you've got your threshold. Actually, this sequence is not going to allow me to show this properly. So let's switch the sequence off and. Okay, so while I'm hitting these little chords, the delay is being ducked. You can still hear it kind of. You can hear that quietly, but when I stop, then the delay kicks in. All right, let's increase the release time so that the fade in is even more gradual. There you go, you can hear that. Uh, and if I take the threshold all the way up, effectively cancel it you can hear the delay sound happening straight away. So that's like a side chain ducking. And then we've got a noise generator. Let's have a listen to this. So this is trying to replicate the feel of the original kind of tape delay units, the analog tape delay unit. So you've got noise amount, and this morphs between different variations of noise. It's just a shame this isn't a modulatable source, uh, target rather. That'll be quite cool, but you can't. Now, in, on its own, um, it's not particularly useful, but what you might find is if you use this in conjunction with the gate, all right, so the gate's gonna switch that off, and then you'll hear the noise come in when I hit a note. Yeah, you hear that? Let's just turn the release down a bit. So the noise only actually happens when the gate's open, which is closer to how it would have been. Probably don't want that much. So yeah, I would use the noise in conjunction with the gate uh, by itself, being on all the time. Probably just a pain in the bum, really. So yeah, I probably wouldn't do that. And then finally, we've got Wobble. Now, Wobble is trying to emulate the variation. It's pretty much the same kind of thing as this delay time here, this delay modulation, but this is just hard baked in. So as I increase this, you're gonna hear the pitch of the delay hits varying a little bit. So it's almost like a, you know, that wow and flutter you get on tape emulations. You get these random variations, these random wobbles, which is quite cool. And this morphs between the wobble types. In fact, this is probably, it doesn't say in the manual, but this is probably morphing between wow and flutter. Again, I'm doing this way too much just so you can hear what's going on. So those are all the controls. It, there's quite a lot to, um, play around with here um, so it's it's worth experimenting now what I found with this is it's much better at doing kind of really dirty uh, grungy distorted delay lines uh, and what I've done here there's if you've ever listened to the Deus Ex soundtrack by Michael McCann he, he uses this kind of sound a lot so what I've done is I've created a little bass line So as that's play, I'm just going to have a little fiddle with the controls and try and get something really kind of gritty and distorted for that kind of post-apocalyptical uh, film score sound that he likes to use a lot. So let's have a go. I'm going to use the um, input clipping. Let's just get the output right down because that's going to that's going to hurt otherwise. get rid of this wobble for a second and then I'm going to use some delay modulation I'm just going to turn it up too much so that I can get my um, LFO time yeah and then I'm going to turn that down around there and probably do some something with the filter Is the filter on yeah
and character. I'm not going to use the gate or the ducking. Noise, probably not. But let's try some wobble. Too much, too much, too much. Yeah, I like that, I like that. And then the last thing I'm going to do in this little uh, demonstration is use some of the reverb. And what I want you to, let me just stop this for a second. Having the reverb baked in can be quite useful because it's another step that you don't have to do in order to kind of dial in a sound. And this is what I found with this Echo plugin. It allows you so much creativity in one place. And it, it's a workflow thing. It actually works really well to get something dialed in pretty quickly. So well, as I increase the reverb amount, just try and perceive how this little melodic pluck sound is fitting in and gelling in with the bass in the background, because it does work quite well, I think anyway. I'm gonna use quite a high decay time. around there. Maybe a bit more. And then probably what you do with a sound like this because the clipping tends to give you a lot of information around these kind of mid lows to mids. So I'm just going to EQ some of this out. So if we have a quick listen to this, let me just narrow this down. Yeah, there, it's around here. Take some of that out. Yeah, that really does make a difference. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna group these two together. Where are we? And just have a listen to what the echo is doing. So I'm just going to switch it on and off with the EQ because the EQ is kind of important to tame what we've done with the Echo plugin. Cool. Boring. I have a funny feeling that the... Uh... Yeah, I think that cut-off jumped up for some reason. Uh, anyway. So that's boring. Cool. So that's it, we're done. Uh, so we know what everything does. In the next video, we're gonna have a look at another couple of examples of using the Echo plugin as a, not only as a delay, but also a sound design tool. So I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next one, cheers. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, We'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.